there, it's Kathy, and welcome to another episode of A Journey into Cybersecurity. Today's episode is sponsored by TNT Creative Group. And just a little recap as to what the purpose is of the Triangle Net and this particular podcast. The podcast uh, kind of sheds a light onto the people behind the scenes in the world of cybersecurity. And it's quite a vast and and diverse world. So I wanted to kind of show you all the different people who play all different roles in fighting the good fight. And it's important for me to raise awareness of all the opportunities that are available to all young and not so young people in this world. There are millions of open jobs, well-paying jobs, right now in this world and nobody is really aware when you're in middle or high school that there are so many opportunities out there so i'm here to kind of shed a light on it make you aware and get you really really excited and inspired by the people who are doing all this good work today i have a very special guest because This is a very close friend of mine, but also a business partner. He happens to be producing this particular podcast through his company, the TNT Creative Group, and his name is Derek Thompson. Hi, Derek. Hey, hey, happy to be here. How are you? Oh, I'm thrilled, beyond thrilled. I'm so happy to have you here and... um, listen to your story some of it i don't know yet myself so this is very exciting to kind of get to know you a little bit better hear your story and share with the world so derek how would we introduce you because there are so many things that you do and i wouldn't even know where to start yeah well thanks again for having me uh it's a li- li- little complex and as we uh, talk for this hour i think we'll we'll peel back the the layers definitely but um i am the founder of a few initiatives uh, one is the i'm a founder of tnt creative group which is a digital marketing agency geared towards um growing our, our business we're also known as a growth agency so the companies that we work with we put all types of video campaigns Web, web campaigns, Google campaigns to uh, make them more visible and grow. But um, the TNT Creative Group is also the engine that is a big support of the community. And that's a part that is just as big as anything. So one of the primary purposes of TNT Creative Group is not only to make our company successful, but also make the world a better place through several um, outreach initiatives such as Tweens and Technology, Bowling for Autism and others that I know we'll talk about more. So I'm the founder founder of uh, of those uh, companies. That That is quite astonishing. And quite honestly, um, time management must be an important thing to do because I don't know how you do it all. I actually wonder if you ever sleep. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it can be can be a challenge. And uh, when when I do sleep, I feel like I pay for it. <laughs> I wake up to madness. But um, yeah, definitely time management organization is something that um, I'm trying to continue to get better at because the more organized I am, the better I manage my time, the better uh, we're able to to do. So I've gotten much better at it. And um, but you never perfect. I'm trying to continue continue to get better at it. Yeah. So you and I, we met at ISSA, the rally chapter. Yeah. Um, and I think our um, our friend Robin, Robert Martin is perhaps the person that you and I have in common um, because he introduced me to you. Mm-hmm. But um, tell me how you got into ISSA, which is, you know, the cybersecurity uh, association yeah. brings professionals together in cybersecurity. Kind of explain how you got into that world. Yeah, yeah. Uh, ISSA, Information System Security Association, is an amazing organization of cybersecurity professionals. And um, I was brought into it by Rob Martin, Robert Martin, great guy. Um, he's the ISSA uh, whisperer and <laughs> has brought many people in the organization right and uh, we both worked at lenovo uh, many years ago at the same time and we used to we worked on the same floor kind of in the same area and if you know rob he's a very personable person 
And, um, you know, we met in the elevator officially <laughs> where he you know, uh, asked who I was and, you know, what I do and invited me to a meeting as he does so many different people. But I was blown away by the meeting, um, the professionals. There were like over 100 people over at NC State at the time. And their presentations were great. You know, they weren't always about cyber. They were about just how to be a better professional, how to deal with stress management, just a lot of they, they really focus on just helping people have the best tech career they can, yes. uh, you know, whether that's mentorship. Um, mm -hmm. They do so much for students that are coming up. So just just a bunch mm -hmm. of great people and, you know, a bunch of great people. That's right up my alley. So um, after a couple of years, I was able to join the board and help them with their annual conference. And just I've met so many great people like, like yourself that. I would not have met if it weren't for ISSA. So very thankful for them. Yes, and I am a firm believer that things happen for a reason and that you cross oh, yeah. paths with people for a reason. So I think uh, I cross paths with you because from that point on, you and I have been doing all kinds of things mm -hmm. uh, for the community. One was at Southern Wake Academy where we work together. You did most of that work, but let's be, <laughs> let's be clear. <laughs> With the no, no, no. <laughs> but still it was uh it was a great initiative and and you've done such an amazing thing there and you and i started collaborating for twins and technology so talk a little bit about that uh well yeah twins and technology is uh definitely something that's near and dear to to my heart obviously um, and I want to point out that, you know, one of the, the um, you know, shortly after meeting you, you made a very generous donation to Twins and Technology. And um, I, I was just so blown away by that, especially the nature of the donation. And I felt such a huge responsibility <laughs> you know, with that. Like, oh, my gosh, I really have to make sure that this is utilized and that, you know, it can impact the kids future. Um, but to get back to you know Twins and Tech, it's a nonprofit organization that focuses on getting kids involved in tech as early as possible. Right now, that early as possible is the third grade, and we in in doing so, we're able to have um, an equal balance between girls and boys in our program that we're so thankful of. We have a lot of diversity across racial and socioeconomic lines. Um, it, 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 it's the perfect melting pot that you would want to see ultimately is what we have with Twins and Technology by focusing on getting kids involved early and also making it, you know, affordable, you know, not making it, you know, a thousand dollars for a camp or, you know, a couple week program, which, you know, yeah, some families can afford, but that might not be the way that they want to, you know, spend their money. They might not think it's that important. Just to yeah. you know, drop a thousand dollars to get a third grader to learn code. Uh, I think I'll wait till middle school, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but what we've learned is there's such a big gap that's happening, where the kids that are not learning tech in elementary school, once it's available in middle and high school, mm -hmm. and it becomes part of the curriculum, you have a lot of kids that have been exposed to it. And they're excelling and a lot of people are intimidated and they just don't go into tech because of that. So the purpose of Twins in Tech is to remove that barrier, get everybody in tech so we can have more leaders and build more great things um, here lo locally. Right. And I think that's probably a very good statement to make is that um, kids are probably very overwhelmed about the technology world as it stands today. They grew up differently than we did being right. so close to it, using it so much from a very young age. But on the other hand, um, it seems as if you have to be like a wizard to know it all, to, to know how to code it or build it or engineer it. And um, it may be uh, an easy conclusion to make that you're not good enough to be in that space. You're not smart enough to yeah. pursue something in that space. But at the end of the day, every company is a technology company. There's no way around it anymore. You kind right, of just right, yes. 
that this is your life, this is your reality, it's part, it's in the fabric of it all. Mm -hmm. So might as well just dive right in and see if you like it or not. But I, I felt that if I were a kid now and I got involved with twins and technology now, I, I would have been much more technology savvy. And I think I would have been less um, insecure about my skill set than, than if I hadn't. So I think this is definitely a way for, and like you said, removing these barriers, but also these emotional uh, insecurities that keep young people from really investing in themselves, basically. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I, I want nothing more than to see, um, you know, adults that are thriving and doing great things in our tech community that came out of twins and technology. And at some point we'll see that. So yeah, really yeah. we're already seeing young kids growing up to be yeah. uh, really uh, <laughs> role models, mentors, yep. uh, books, persons. Yep. So very fun to see already that growth in such a short period of time. So it's mm -hmm. gonna be fantastic to see them all grown up and being real thought leaders in the technology. Question, as a CEO, but also as a marketing guru, um, how does cybersecurity apply to you and why does it matter in that particular field? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it it's everything um, because you know one as a as a CEO, you know we're dealing with um, a lot of private information, and if that information gets in the wrong hands, you know that you know bad things can happen. That's certainly a breach. So, you know, feel that there's a lot of responsibility that CEOs have, and a lot of information, sensitive information that they see. So cybersecurity is very important. And in the nature of what we do from being a marketing firm, we deal with uh, web hosting services. We yeah. deal with websites, social media accounts, all of that. And that's the target of, you know, uh, hacks and breaches. So, you know, yeah. we actually even had many years ago, about five years ago, we had a, um, a, a, a big um, attempted hack that we were able to prevent and recover from. But if um, we didn't have certain things in place, we would not have um, survived it. So yeah. it's very important for uh, marketing companies you know, tech companies um, and is and small to mid sized businesses because, yeah, the larger company can typically recover from it. Targets yeah. still here. Right. <laughs> right. But yeah, if it happens to a small business or even some mid-sized businesses, you know, certain breaches, that can be the end of your, your company. So it's very yeah. important. That is such a powerful statement to make. All right. Enough about the serious. Uh, well, let's talk a little bit about Derek, the kid. So. Okay. Um, what was it growing up and, and where did you grow up, Derek? Oh, yeah, it's kind of complex. Um, I mean, I was born, you know, officially in uh, Illinois, um, not too far from Chicago. Uh, grew up in a town called Wheaton, uh, in Illinois, uh, around Warrenville and, um, was there until, um, I was 13 and we moved to, um, North Carolina right before my high school and was here from high school and have been here ever since so kind of have both of those worlds so grew up my younger years in the snow in the <laughs> cold the midwest and definitely have that experience and then also have the you know southern living experience which i'll probably have for the rest of my life uh because once you <laughs> if you come from the snow then once you go to a warmer climate you normally don't go back no so, that uh <laughs> is where i grew up so yeah both both uh both both areas so elementary school mid middle school have a lot of fond memories in illinois i'm a big sports fan so uh i grew up in chicago in the michael jordan era 
Uh, oh. So being a sports fan and loving basketball and all that, that was great. Getting to see him come up and uh, give a huge thanks to my parents for that. And um, then, you know, moved. And then it, North Carolina was second best because, again, being a big sports fan and being a Michael Jordan fan, yeah. okay, well, North Carolina is where he's from. So yeah. then we <laughs> moved here. So, yeah. So how what, what kind of kid were you? Were you outgoing? Were you shy? Did you already mm. play with technology? Was mm. Mark already on your radar? What what, what was going on? Yeah. In your mind? I was um kind of had split personality a little bit, which I can still have now. Um, I was shy. I was more shy a, a, as a kid, but when I turned on, I was on. And for me, on was sports. So. Um, I was a decent, you know, bas basketball was my main sport, um, played football, played other things, but basketball was what I loved. So I was a huge sports fan, our whole family, big sports fans. And the cool thing was I was also fortunate enough to go to a lot of sporting events. So that was really cool. So that's something that I, you know, try to do now with my kid. But um, yeah, sports was, was a big part of it. Tech was a part. Both my parents worked in corporate America. They worked at AT&T. The laboratories. So, so um, we had. I guess it wasn't a computer at first. We had a terminal in <laughs> in, in the house, which I was fascinated by, and um, used to play video games on it. And you know, just to show my age, you know, I had to. You had to write like a DOS command prompt oh, to, yeah. start, to start the game. You know, <laughs> you wouldn't just put the game in and start. You had to write like a little bit. Of, I guess code, right? Yeah. <laughs> to start the game. But definitely enjoyed that. Tech was always around me by, you know, my parents working in corporate America. Um, you know, my dad's um, office at home, there were tech books, tech and business books all around. Yeah. Uh, so I always saw those. And funny, one quick story. Um, I think it was middle school. <laughs> we had a project in one of my classes. I don't know if it was a science class or what the class was, but we had a project in they gave us free liberty to do pretty much whatever we wanted with the project. So knowing that, you know, where my dad worked and knowing the books that we had around the house, I told my teacher and my parents that I was going to create a computer game. And I think we had maybe oh, two couple weeks, right? And I was going to create a computer game and it was like elaborate. I mean, it was better than any game you can find right now that's out. And the, the funny thing was that nobody told me I couldn't do it. You know, the teacher didn't tell me I couldn't do it. My you know, parents didn't tell me I couldn't do it. They all went along with it. So as we got closer to the due date, um, I still thought I could do it, even up to the night before. And my dad said, well, in order to do that, you probably want to do that in C. You probably want to write that in the C programming language. So he had a C programming language book on the shelf and I kind of flipped through it and still still thought I could do it. So obviously I was not able to create the game and the teacher ended up teacher ended up still giving me like a C just because I was so ambitious. <laughs> you were visionary. He liked your vision. Yeah, like my vision. So my vision alone got me, got me that. But um, you know, I always remember that now being an adult and looking back, um, I really appreciate the fact that, you know, they obviously knew that was not possible. But instead of crushing my dreams, they kind of harnessed it and you know, yeah. uh, showed me the past. So I thought that was funny. But yeah, tech was definitely around when I was a kid. So moving right before high school, was that a hard thing? I mean, I can imagine it, it can. Kind of yeah, yeah. Um, yes and no. It it it, it depended. It, it flowed. So at first, I was excited because, um, you know, growing up in a cold weather area, we all thought, how cool would it be to live in Florida, live in California, live in those different types of places. So, you know, when I found out we were going to move to North Carolina, I was like, OK, well, hey, OK, warm, warm, wet weather place. Um, and I, I kind of in, in, in embraced it. And you know, that was the first time moving. So I always lived in the same place. So it's going to be one or the other. So it wasn't like at that time I was like, you know, military kid or someone that had moved a lot. I was like the first time. 
So I was I, I was cool with it. I, I, I was excited about it. I thought about that side of it. Um, but then once we started like driving, <laughs> it kind of hit me like, oh man, we're really we're really leaving. So you know, it was kind of some sadness as we were we were you know making the the trip down and. The first year was kind of tough because again, starting from scratch, you know, no friends, making friends, knew which you know, I was able to do, wow. but just starting from scratch was was difficult in a in a whole new area. And we moved at the beginning of the summer, so it's the summer before my freshman year. So that whole summer, I still hadn't made any friends yet. Uh, so it wasn't. I was like waiting for school to start back that fall to then start to to make friends and whatnot. But um, yeah, it, it went back and forth. Uh, ultimately, I, I think it was still a, a great move. I'm happy we, we moved here. Yeah. Um, and I think it, it, it helped, helped us all a lot. That's awesome. Yeah. So when people ask you the question, what did you wanna, what did you wanna be when you grew up? What was your answer? Oh, I, I thought I was going to the NBA. <laughs> yeah, I was going to the NBA. At, I love at, it. Yeah, yeah. At, at, at that point, I, I still do. I, I still feel that if I get in shape and do certain things, I, I can still play. Um, so that's part of my. <laughs> as we dive in, you'll see that my confidence is my my biggest asset and also my biggest liability. <laughs> time, but yeah, in 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 middle school, I was yeah going to be a professional ball player. There was no doubt about it. Um, high school that started to change and I understood, okay, probably not, that probably won't happen. And, um, I then settled on being an entrepreneur and I wanted to own my own business and I'm cool. I, I grew up, um, visiting my parents, you know, job and they worked on computers and I thought that was so cool. And, you know, they worked in these huge buildings that, you know, uh, kind of surrounded the community and, um, I, for some reason, I, when I was ex exposed to that, I wanted to own it and instead of just work there, that just, it just triggered something in me. Yeah. And I, again, for some crazy reason, I thought that was, that that was possible. There's no, <laughs> no one told me it wasn't possible. Um, there was no reason for me to think it wasn't. So, yeah. um, and I think that's the reason why Twins and Techs exists. That's the reason why. We do a lot of things we do now because I understand what just thinking something is possible can do for you. So, uh, yeah, I as early as high school, I um, wanted to be an entrepreneur and acted on that and started my first business. Um, my the summer of my going into my senior year, I started my first business and um, really haven't look back I mean, obviously a lot of tries and failures and you know, it wasn't until about you know seven years ago that uh you know I did something successful but um as far as having that that fire and knowing that yeah. i wanted to be an entrepreneur i um kind of knew that in, in high school yes what a great mindset to start life with is to think that anything is possible mm -hmm. you can do it yep and you just have to do it. Yep. Um, yep. Michael Jordan would be proud. <laughs> <laughs> Hope so. Yeah, I never got to, ne never had a chance to meet him. I was really close one time. We, again, just shows how cool it is being a parent. I remember one time my dad picked me up from baseball practice. And it's like, hurry, we got to go. We got to run. I was like, why are we rushing? And word got out that he was at some car dealership signing autographs. That was kind of in our neighborhood. And we got there and there was this long line and we waited. And when we finally kind of got close to the top, you know, he left and went to his car and everybody's rushing his car and he peeled off and everything and <laughs> uh, never got to uh, meet him. But hopefully through, uh, you know, as we continue to do big things in the business world, we can we can make it happen. Oh, wouldn't that be amazing? Yeah. You know what? I have faith that you will. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, so I'm just blown away by the fact that you, one, you wanted to be an entrepreneur, two, mm -hmm. you became one before you even graduated in high school. Yeah. Just crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Were you doing any kind of student jobs or things that kind of got you to that place where you said, okay, 
this is what I want to do? Like, how do you move into this, this space? Yeah. Yeah. Very, very interesting. So um, there's a couple of pieces on how that happens. So for one, one of the things that ignited the fire to, to make me start as early as I did, I always knew wanted to have my own business, be an entrepreneur. But what made me act on it in high school was something as simple as I was flipping through a catalog that we received in the mail. And um, it was a wholesale catalog. And just by flipping through that, I learned the concept of, oh, wow, okay, you can buy things wholesale and sell them retail. I hadn't heard of that, didn't know that existed. And I thought, okay, well, this this might be the vehicle. I've got the book right here. I've got a little bit of money, you know, on the side from you know my YMCA job. Um, let me see what I can what I can do. So um, through that through that um, catalog that had like office supplies and electronics, started my own my own business and created my own brochures and had the products that I thought would be the top sellers had them in the brochure and, you know, I was going to get a big deal with the school system. They were going to, you know, stop buying from wherever they were going to buy and start buying all their supplies for me. Um, and, you know, businesses would start buying their stuff from me and yeah, I was going to be rich. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, yeah. And, and I was like, well, you know, it's not that big a deal that I only have a couple hundred bucks because I'm sure people will buy from me and then they'll be, I'll collect the money and they'll be fine with getting it, you know, a month or two later. That won't be a big deal. So needless to say, <laughs> I didn't sell too much. Uh, so, so sold a couple things though. Sold a couple of, of uh, things, but but that ignited the the fire and you know, yeah. had you know, had that business and all that and was able to, you know, get a get a pager and you know, all the other things that came with that and was a real, you know, had had business cards and I had meetings to go to and stuff like that. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, that I think that at the time was probably more important to me than, you know, actually making money was all of that. So yeah. um, that's what <laughs> that's what what started it. But what actually um, taught me a lot about business was a few years after that, when I was 21, I worked for a startup um, Internet company called Net 32. And it was funny. I, it just shows again that the time I um, answered an ad in the paper because that's how it was. Then it was classified ad in the paper for a data entry job. So I was just looking for work, looking for a job um, at 20, 20, 21. And um, it was a data entry job for an internet company. And this internet company sold dental supplies and they were on cusp of the internet. This was around 97-ish, 97-98. And um, at that time, e-commerce was on the web, but it wasn't that prevalent. And, oh, when, no. right, and when people bought on the web, usually they it was business to consumers, more individuals buying things. Companies didn't really buy much on the web at that time. Mm -hmm. B2B, B2B wasn't prevalent. But the founder of this company had a vision and he was an, an ex uh, dentist and he was like, it's silly for me to flip through all these different catalogs when I can just go online and buy my products. Why, why don't people get it? Why, why aren't they doing it? I saw the vision and the way we were entering products, we were learning a lot of uh, code and web development and we all quickly realized, okay, this isn't just our typical data entry we're doing a little more than, than this here. So while working at this company, I saw them go from a single entrepreneur. I actually started working in the guy's house in his bonus room. It was like five of us in, in, in his house. And um, within a few months, we were moving into an office. We moved into an office. We went mm -hmm. through a round of a couple of rounds of venture capitalist funding. Mm -hmm. um, we They completely rebranded from before, when I started working with the company, it was dental purchasing. I think it was another word in the URL dot coms really, 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 really long. <laughs> and the colors were like ugly and everything. And a marketing agency came in and completely rebranded the whole company. 
and we had the slick logo. Our name was Net32 because the 32 teeth in the mouth and all of that and the research. And I was, yeah, and I was kind of on the edge of like listening in and hearing and seeing all that was going on. And I saw that whole process and I was, you know, fascinated by it. So uh, another thing that happened at this company was one day they came in and had all these tech books that they laid out and they said, hey, we want you guys because at this time there were like six or seven of us data entry people there. They said, we want you to learn more tech skills for yourself and also for us you can, you know, uh, help us build more um, pieces to our site. So through um, one of the books that they had is when I learned how to build websites. Yeah, and that led to another book and another book and another book that I kept getting to learn how to build websites. And I started then just building sites on the side for people that I knew that needed websites. So uh, through that through that experience, I learned a technical skill. Mm -hmm. um, I was able to witness branding and the importance of it and how that works. And I also got to travel across the country to dental trade shows. I got to go to Chicago, Boston, Vegas, um, uh, Phoenix. I went to a lot of different places and went to trade shows and I would sell and demo the website to other mm -hmm. dentists who were walking by and telling them why they should order on Net32 versus their other way. So that basically was like my college. Um, yeah, everything that I learned there gave me the skills to um, really venture off and start a business, have a, a, a skill uh, that was a tech skill and really helped me to develop a lot of the soft skills that I needed to be yeah. an entrepreneur. Yeah. Wow. That was crazy. So on one hand, you just stress the importance of applying what you learn. Mm -hmm. and having that feedback loop while you're doing it to see what works, what doesn't work, what sticks, what doesn't stick. Yeah. Um, so that that is such a valuable lesson is to really be in that place. And it took you, you know, just responding to an ad in the paper yeah. on for a job that seemed very limited in scope, but it opened up a universe of learning for you, yeah. the whole spectrum of marketing, basically. Yep. yep. Crazy. Yep. Yeah. Wow. That's just <laughs> awesome. Listen. So was there any college experience that with you that you wish to share? Mm -hmm. uh, just b b very little. Um, I did start at college. I started at community college. So I started yeah. at Wake Tech. Um, and then I went to NC State for a little bit, took some engineering classes. Oh, um, when I finished, when I graduated from high school, uh, I applied to a couple of schools and, and, and got into some universities. Actually, one of them was Johnson and Wales up in Rhode Island, uh, but it was, wasn't the, they're known for their culinary program, but um, they were, um, I think they already had a business program, but they were really trying to push the business program at that time and um, got accepted there. Knew I couldn't go because I knew, you know, I wasn't going to go all the way to Rhode Island to go, but I just wanted to kind of check the check the box to know that I applied and, you know, could have gone if I if I cho chose to. But um, yeah, I, I did not finish college. And um, I think a lot of that was my eagerness to really get out there and apply what I, I knew I could do. And I was literally, and I don't advocate this, but I was literally, <laughs> you know, sit, sitting in class and, you know, listening to the teacher and just, you know, you know how the, the pace can be very slow. Obviously with all the accelerated classes that we know, we know that the amount that you learn in a typical semester can be condensed. And I was sitting there like, man, you know, why are we taking all this time to go through this? And also just the way that I know I can learn, I was like, OK, I can just learn. I, I can just I can just go through the same book that they're, you know, using to teach us. I don't have to you know, go at this, this pace. Again, me being the way that <laughs> the way that, that I am. So that that definitely held me back in the sense of I, I basically couldn't sit still long enough to finish. And 
um, I, I felt that the four or five years that I would spend sitting there, you know, in class was setting me back four or five years from mm -hmm. pushing my business. So mm -hmm. I made the decision to just push. I, I, I felt that it was more about what you can do and what mm -hmm. you can show versus the book knowledge that you have. And I was like, all right, if I own the company, nobody's going to be worried about it. If I have a you know, degree from a school, what's about my mindset? And as, as true as that may be, <laughs> you know, there's other benefits, you know, to, to going to college, but yeah, for various reasons, um, I, I stopped the, the, the journey, uh, mm -hmm. early on. And, um, you know, I, for, and there was a like another time when I hit like my mid twenties, I was like, you know what, I really probably should go back to school. Mm -hmm. And, um, I think I went for a week and I had that same feeling that I had when I was in my early 20s sitting there at school. And I was like, nah, this just I just I just can't do it. And I was that much further along in um, my entrepreneurship journey at that time. So I was really going to have to pause a lot of things. Then yeah. and I was like, nah, I've got to just go full speed and push my put push my my, my business um, in, in hindsight. You know that that it is a regret because there are a lot of other things that, that, that you get in college from mm -hmm. the um from rubbing elbows with other people that are going to go off and do great things you're, you're really building your network yes. as much as you are gaining the expertise um i also think that part of the problem was that i wasn't really in the right courses i feel mm -hmm. that for me, I should have been in more of economics, finance. I think that would have appealed to me much more than yeah. what I was what I was doing. So, you know, obviously hindsight's twenty twenty to learn that. But um, fortunately, there's there's so many different paths to get yeah. to where you want to where where you want to go. And um, you know, traditional college education is a great path. It's one that I advocate. And it's one that I'm certainly pushing my San Diego to. Um, however, uh, it's not the only path. Now, yeah. since th th there are a lot of different paths, um, and just j just because an unorthodox path will get you there, <laughs> doesn't mean that's the best path to go. Because you may be making it harder on yourself. You can still get there, <laughs> but it's like like to get from point A to point B you can drive, you know, a hundred miles to get there, or you can drive 250 miles. <laughs> it's the path. So those are other things to consider. All yeah. Right. Well, you have to strike a balance, right? Between the learning part, the, how do you pace yourself? What, what do you choose? And do you really know why you're choosing to pursue a right. particular course and, and that learning path? But also the financial investment that now the traditional path uh, incurs to your family or yourself um, is something you have to consider. And looking in cybersecurity, we're surrounded with adults who are reinventing themselves, right? Yeah, They're right. not going back to college. <laughs> They're not putting their, their career on pause for four years or longer and saying, I'm going to go take a bachelor's and a master's in cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. No, they keep working and then they learn on the job. They find ways to apply the things they learn at night on weekends. They yeah. take certifications. They go to ISSA at night to network and to learn new skills. And guess what? That works just fine too. Yeah. So it's all about understanding exactly what is your purpose? What is that inner voice, like you said, that that's telling you this feels right or it doesn't this is me or it's not right so that's massive lesson that you're sharing here yeah 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 absolutely and, and it's funny because my, my parents also you know they 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 knew me and um coming out of high school you know, I, I made pretty i was a i was a ab student in high school uh more more b's than a's but um Definitely tried to stay above that, you know, just yeah. not, not getting C's was kind of my standard uh, <laughs> at that time. And, um, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but they said, um, they, they, again, they, they could have, you know, sent me to a four year school, but they're like, yeah, you know what? 
I they they wanted me to kind of prove myself and go to a community college at first to just see how serious I was and to to make sure that I wouldn't go off to a four year school and waste their money. So um, the experiment was to go to community college and we we, we found out <laughs> the result from there. <laughs> And it's good that you have your parents to kind of guide you along the way and to, yeah. to be your advocate in this process. So let's talk a little bit more about role models. Who were your role models when you were a kid, other than Michael Jordan? <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah, um, interesting. I had, had a lot. Um, Many of my teachers were really good role models as early as elementary school. I remember my, my fifth grade teacher was a great role model. One of his um, rules was that you had to know he was the uh, head of the chess club. And one of his rules to, to pass fifth grade, pass his class, was you had to learn how to play chess. Uh, wow. Yeah, yeah. So that that was uh, re really cool. It, it's funny. It, a lot of it stuck. I haven't played in years. and. I'd have to have a quick rundown of how to play, but then it would come back to me. Uh, but uh, yeah, he, he was a great, great role model. Um, as far as in the community, I had, um, there was a friend of my dad's name was Greg, Gregory Jones, and he got me into coaching and was also a big catalyst of um, just getting involved in the community. So his son played basketball and um, he asked me to be his assistant coach. Oh, wow. Riley. Yeah. And at the time I was in my early 20s at the time and, uh, you know, didn't have kids or anything like that. But, you know, was out there coaching. And he he also had a rule where um, when we had games, he would wear a suit. And so then I had to follow, you know, suit with that. And I was like, well, why, why, well, why are we wearing suits in a rec, <laughs> rec league game? We look silly. He's like, nah, man, you know, these kids, they, they, you know, they role models and they see us dressed this way. This sets a certain, you know, presence and, you know, all that. And it was funny. He, I, I knew what he was doing for the kids and not only myself. So then he was strategically for certain games at certain times, not make it. And I had to then step up and be, the head coach. And so then I'm there wearing a suit and, you know, kind of, you know, have these kids attention and they're, you know, teaching them and whatnot. And there were a lot of other things that went along with that because there were some kids that could make the practice, had to pick them up. And there was a lot that went with that, but it was such a rewarding experience where I continued to coach. I coached at a lot of different levels from as little as four year olds where we're on the court with them, telling them where to pass the ball all the way through 15. So I coached that whole that whole range really throughout my, my, my 20s. Um, and, uh, you know, was then so excited of, man, what, what will it be like, you know, if I have kids in this league and could, could actually coach? But um, that was a big catalyst. And then a friend of mine named Michael Smith, who owned and operated a Zaxby's franchise, um, mm -hmm. he had he was one of the first people to hire um, me and TNT Creative Group for ongoing recurring marketing. Uh, most of our clients at that time were um, like one and done. We you know would build a site. We do one thing for them. They call us when they need us. But he was the first to say, "Nah, man, I I need you like monthly. Let's set up a monthly recurring rate." where you do these things for me. And, and I was like, oh, wow, OK, this this is great, <laughs> great, great deal. But we became really great friends. Um, he passed tra tragically of us uh, so several years ago, but uh, he was super young. He was like at the time, like his late 20s, uh, early 30s and owned a, it was the owner operator of his Axby's and uh, had a disability. Um, part of his he he had one hand. Okay. So other arms stopped like under the elbow and you would never know. Matter of fact, I knew him for like months and never knew that he had one hand. And I mean, the guy did just everything was amazing, but he was he had the biggest heart of anybody you ever know and gave to everybody, <laughs> even to a fault and was so involved in the community. And um, we I always wanted to model that dedication. He was involved with all the schools. He was involved with the Rotary, all the different organizations. 
And um, he was a huge role model for me and, and um, set, set a standard that I wanted to, to, to try to, to get close to. Wow. So it sounds like not only were they role models, but they truly mentored you also because yeah. I now understand how you were able to juggle a classroom, classroom full of uh, middle school kids. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> During robotics, um, so that explains a lot how you were able to just mm -hmm. manage the crowd um, and how tweens and technology is, is is such a big thing as well, where you're really investing in children. Um, did yeah. you see yourself doing what you do today back then? Yeah, yeah, I, I did. I, I I saw myself having a successful tech company yeah, yeah de definitely um you know growing up r riding around and seeing all these tech um these big tech buildings um yeah i definitely had that vision when i thought of being an entrepreneur yeah if anything it's funny i um i saw much more success than what we have so far so that's a big driver so i in no way shape or form think that we have um or right we have not met my expectations at all right. uh and that is uh yeah I've, I've definitely have seen what we've done so far but i also have seen a lot more um and to go back to one other thing i want to to answer if i could could jump back um one of my other jobs that played a big part was the ymca yes that, okay. yeah that, that that was my very first job um, and it was right up the street from the house. So it was the Cary Family YMCA. Um, <laughs> it was funny. One of the reasons why I wanted to work there so bad. Um, I didn't want to work fast food. And all my friends worked fast food, worked at McDonald's, Burger King, and all that. And I didn't want to work there. But it wasn't because I felt that I was better or anything like that. I was intimidated and was, like, scared to work there <laughs> because... I didn't think I could handle romantic <laughs> like the cash register or dealing with like, you know, a pissed off customer or somebody, right? Like that, that freaked me out. Yeah. So I was like, man, no, I'm not ready for that. I can't do that. I was like, I need to work at the Y where, you know, I don't have to worry about checking anybody out. Let me work with some kids. So, um, and it was funny. I, I couldn't, I got denied at first. Like I couldn't get in mm -hmm. and then I just kept applying and just kept like, nah, man, you guys got to hire me because I literally can't really work anywhere else right now. <laughs> so I eventually got hired in the game room and then worked a summer camp uh, where it was my whole summer um, between my junior and senior year. Um, my whole summer was there with the kids. I had third graders, <laughs> which is funny how that aligned now. And we were the Starbursts. And that was my group and we were responsible for them the whole day. So it wasn't like, okay, you had breaks and you could go to the side. No, when we had lunch, our troop, we went out in the woods and we sat together and we ate lunch together. So that really taught me a lot about responsibility and also yeah. um, about, you know, managing kids and keeping them entertained all, all freaking day. <laughs> um, and it was funny. Another lesson in that was, I didn't realize <laughs> with camp that it was like all summer. And, you know, I was looking forward to my senior year. Like, hey, man, this is, you know, one of my last summers. I'm going to just chill, celebrate. I thought it was maybe a couple of weeks. And I learned that, you know, soon, like the week before, it was all summer. And my downtime was going to be nights and weekends. So I went back to the counselor. I said, hey, and you know, I, I, I thought I was being really stand up and professional because I'm not just going to not show up. I'm going to sit down and look them in the eye and say that, you know, I'm sorry, but, uh, you know, I can't do this and I want to give you notice and be stand up about it and all that. So I sat down and uh, her, I think her name was Lori. I sat down in her office and gave her this big spill. And she looked at me and was like, I basically don't, don't, don't accept this resignation. It's like, you're like, she made me feel awful. <laughs> like, you're you're you know not f following through with your responsibilities and i'm very disappointed i mean just anything you could say to just get me house like oh my gosh 
<laughs> so I'm sitting there. Man, it's just like, so yeah, if you want to do this, you can, but it's just basically just told me how awful I was. And <laughs> I sat there and I was like, all right, I I'll do it. I I'm good. It's like, I remove it. I'm good. I'll be here. I'm not going to flake out. I I'll follow through. It's like, you you said you do it. You gave your word and now you're not doing it. And so that was also a huge lesson on yeah. that, really, on, on understanding what you're signing up for, what you're committing to, and yeah. knowing that people are counting on you. So definitely had to mention that. Oh, absolutely. And um, I'm, I bet it was a choice that you don't regret making either. Yeah. You stayed. Yeah. yeah, that was something. After it was painful at the time, so I was like, man, I am giving up my freaking saying I really wasn't, you know, you think about it, I had the weekend, I had it, it really wasn't that, you know, big, but yeah, I, at the time I thought I was giving up everything, but yeah, I, it, it ended up being a lot of fun. Um, I learned a lot, you know, it wasn't as huge of a commitment and, uh, yeah, it, 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 it was really, really the experience that I still think about to this day. So I'm so happy I followed through with that. Yes. But I, I bet it had many more responsibilities than you would have had in, in, in fast food, honestly. With <laughs> yeah, probably did. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. But I had that. that that's true. But you know, that that's one of my things. If when, when my wife sees this, or even if she's listening now, uh, that's one of our things. Like when we're in the car and if we pull up to a fast food place, like in this, everyone has an order and I'm driving. You got to tell me beforehand, like, what do you want? So I can have it in my head so I can like, don't, that's like a big thing. Don't tell me once we're at the window and I'm waiting for all these orders, I I, I still freak out. So I still, to this day, could not work at the window. That's like, as, as much as I can supposedly do, that's something that I still am not capable of, uh, of handling. So big <laughs> shout out and much respect to those that are able to manage uh, customers in the in a line. <laughs> I, I completely agree. And, and and now with COVID, they're all doing it in the cold, in the rain. <laughs> <Right. laughs> yes, these are uh, commendable people. So what are some of the most important qualities or skills you use today? Ooh, um, time management for sure is, is mm -hmm. one of the biggest ones. Is, yeah, definitely. I mean, look, looking at my day, because what I have to factor in with time management now is when I look at my list, we all kind of have a list that we go into the day of knowing what we have planned. But in the role that I have now, I'm going to get so many things are going to pop up that are going to mm -hmm. take me away from that. So I have to have time built in and estimate, OK, what can I do in a day and also factor in what's going to pop up the unknown. So that's that that's a huge part. Um, so time management, um, I would say a lot of the soft skills of just um, talking to people, man managing personalities, working mm -hmm. to get the most um, out of people, helping them to reach their fullest potential is is a big one um but yeah a lot of a lot of soft skills and i still use some some tech uh for for sure um so thankful that i have the ability and skill to still code uh still build sites still do uh, certain things like that I, I rely on those especially now that we're still small i still have to do a, a lot of that but um i, I would say on the day-to-day -day, my time management and you really just get in the most out of people are the the two that I use the most. Yeah, and um, you know Microsoft's Bill Gates. He's he's a few days older now, but um, he he says that he can buy anything in the world, <laughs> um, but he can't buy time. Mm -hmm. The most precious yeah. thing that you have, so you have to use it very wisely. Yeah. So yeah. I think that was some good words of wisdom there from. From a little yes, which you are too. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, when you're hiring people, is that also what you're looking for? Uh, the soft skills part. What mm -hmm. What do you look for when you hire someone? Yeah, yeah. It, it, so it, it depends on the position, 
But yeah, soft skills are always a benefit. That's going to, no matter where you are, going to give you an advantage, especially in the tech industry. You know, we're not known for always having you know a lot of the, the soft skills, but that's something that will definitely separate you, and it is a very important one, and one that will give you a leg up. Um, so what kind? What kind of soft skills? Let's speak. Yeah, what kind of soft skills? Um, you know, be, being able to ar- articulate um, your position. Um, you know, are you someone that can present to a, a group group of people? Um, uh, you know, one thing that we look for is, you know, how how much do you love what 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 you do? Um, are you does does that resonate? Does that show? Because if you really love what you do, you're gonna you know go the extra mile and really try to make sure that 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 is right. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, with time being so precious, if you're the type of person that's going to do everything to try to make it right the first time without people having to come back and you know tell you that it's not right, that is a a big big skill. Mm-hmm. Um, for TNT, we look a lot at uh, community. You know, we want people that are community focused and oriented because everyone that works with us, they are a part of our outreach in some way, shape or form mm-hmm. from, you know, helping at events to um, you know, just anything in relation to community. So everyone that we have has a you know, huge heart um, and mm-hmm. they're really community focused. So that, that that's a big piece and something that I never want to lose um you know reading you know the trailblazer book that you know you you gave me um you know that's a big part of you know the salesforce um culture and we really want to cultivate that so really just just making sure that people can fit in our culture is one of the biggest biggest things yes Where's this drive coming from? Where is the drive to invest so heavily in community? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it. I, I was. I look at my store myself, which is where a lot of that drive came from. Um, I know that I wanted to be an entrepreneur and wanted to be very successful, just based off of what I was exposed to. I never had anybody telling me you know, giving me any, you know, big speeches or, you know, telling me that I could do anything, although that, you know, it's great. Um, I just, just from being exposed, I always thought that I could do anything. And I know that there's so many people that don't have that, that if I, I know that if we can introduce people to that hope is going to change their lives. Mm-hmm. And I feel a huge responsibility to do that because like, okay, I know I can. So mm-hmm. it's like, it, it's, it's almost like I'm doing myself and the world and God, honestly, a, a, a disservice. If I know full well <laughs> that I can impact somebody's life mm-hmm. by exposing them to something positive and I don't do it, you know, I, that, that, that's really my, my why. I mean, I just, I just know that, I've been blessed with the ability to impact lives and change it. So I feel that I have to. Wow. That's amazing. And speaking about Mark Benioff, who who wrote Trailblazer, and um, when I read that, uh, it spoke so deeply to me because um, it definitely resonates to me as well that it's important to make a difference, make an impact, give yeah. back uh, to your community because at some point somebody did something for you as well. Nobody gets mm-hmm. to where they are mm-hmm. without the people behind them, uh, rooting for them, supporting them, giving them the tools and resources that they need to succeed. And I, I read that book, Trailblazer, and I, I felt like, this was you. You are that trailblazer that I know that I get to, you know, write your coattails <laughs> <laughs> to, to kind of be part of something bigger than myself. Um, and I feel we're doing amazing things. Um, so let's let's look forward. 
let's look at the future for a bit. Um, so what's ahead on the horizon for Derek? You, you already said we're not done with TNT Creative Group. Still have, I still see a lot of potential in the future. What, what else is ahead yeah. for Derek, TNT Creative Group, Trains and Technology, mm -hmm. Going for Autism, um, all these yeah. other organizations? Talk a little bit more about them. Yeah, yeah. Future, the future is bright. Um, for let me kind of run down the, the list a little bit. So for Twins of Technology, we want to and are are in the process of doing that now, really make it a nationwide organization where mm -hmm. children from all over the um, country and it may eventually be international, but are able to learn how to code. Um, we want to be similar to the first T in golf where you know, if you're you have a child and they're in elementary school and you want them to learn code, we want you to think about tweens and technology as the place for them to go and learn. Why? Because we have the best experts from all over the country that are volunteering their time because they love tech. Um, and yeah. it's it's at a you know reasonable rate where you can take take advantage of it. And you know, one of the things that we typically do with our um, our, our nonprofits and our for profits are normally to the extreme. You know, our for profit tech organizations are super, super expensive um, and don't always give you the best product. Our yeah. nonprofit, across just nonprofits in general, typically put people in a group in a silo that is not really positive, you know. Um, and, and a lot of times the product is not top notch is not superior. So I want to end that I, I feel that you can do both. You can walk chew gum at the same time. I feel that through, you know, Cisco and Red Hat and AWS and Truist and all these great companies that we're aligned with, I feel that through um, tech gurus that love, you know, technology, um, we can offer the best training for the best price. Yeah. And if you do that, then we've got we, we've got it made. We don't we no longer have to uh, have our kids isolated in in, in yeah. a silo, um, and so that's that's what what we want to do and really help kids learn. Uh, P Python is what we're pushing hard right now. Mm -hmm. that's a great programming language, and um, now we're starting to have twelve week courses where they can truly learn uh, learn learn tech technology. So through Twins and Tech, just getting access to more kids um, through Bowling for Autism. Is a program that helps uh, schools and other organizations that support children with um, disabilities. Yeah. And what we are doing are having you know bowling events, which has been a challenge right now, um, yeah. and other fundraising events to provide them the funding and resources because typically they're the first to get cut. You know, mm -hmm. we get tight, we strip from special education um, mm -hmm. you know, category, and we want to prevent that. So. Um, that's what we've been doing through bowling for autism and our have continued to even through through this pandemic, we've still been able to donate to schools and to help carry that mission forward. And for TNT Creative Group, and for me personally, um, you know, that we were just scratching the surface, the sky's the limit. And what I see a long term is a company that is as well known and as big as a Salesforce, as a um, a Google, a Facebook, those of that caliber. And that's important. It's important for us to do that for one one big reason. Um, you know, as we look at our heroes, for um, particularly people of color, you have. Um, there are a lot, right? You've got, you know, Mark Zuckerberg, you've got, you know, all these, you have all these corporations that you can look at mm -hmm. and see young CEOs all over, right? But for our community, it's typically athletes and mo movie stars. And although those are great, and heck, I wanted to be that and still think I can, you know, <laughs> go to the NBA, um, I, I, I want to see more kids have the dream that I had to be an entrepreneur 
And I feel that if we have a company that's well known, that's at that level, that is owned by minority, it'll give more people that dream. If we see a, you know, a Twitter, Instagram, any, any of these like tech companies, we've got so many, but you know, there's not a there, there, there's not a face, there's not a black or brown face for any of these yet. And I think once that's identified and once you can see that, you're going to have more and more people building stuff, coding and really trying to emulate and be that we emulate what, what, what we see. So um, ultimately, that is a driver. And that's something that I want to happen, whether it's through TNT Creative Group or one of our kids through Tweens and Tech, they go on and build that and they do it. I don't care how it happens. It doesn't have to be me. Um, but through all of our efforts, that's what I ultimately want. So then we've got that some, we have that, um, we have something that, that everybody can see. And then they say, Hey, I want to be the next whoever, <laughs> right? Um, that, that, that's a big, big job. And that's what I, what I see and will happen at some point. And that's, that's why I, and producing this podcast with you. It's mm -hmm. to share role models with children of all backgrounds so that they can see themselves in these people and say, oh, well, you don't have to be a white male to be successful in business or to do anything in the world that aspires me. You can be anything. Um, mm -hmm. And there's this, this strong saying that you can't be what you can't see. So. Yeah. We're, we're, we're giving those role models and, and, and sharing their stories and sharing the, the very simple message. It's possible. Right. Yep. Yeah. That, that's right. That's <laughs> <good>. <laughs> and, um, about the, the 12 week program, um, which is Ozaria, if yeah. I pronounce it right. Yeah, we did. <laughs> What I found out from the first intro sessions that we had is that it includes not just coding, but it includes cybersecurity and all kinds of other technical yeah. lessons um, where it's about the gamification of learning. And I think that's where the future of learning is all about. It's making it hands on. It's making it interactive. It's making it accessible. And it doesn't have to come at the cost of a house. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes, that very, very well said. Yes. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I'm so excited for that to uh, to be available. So, yeah, we'll be, be available very soon. So a question for you in terms of what would you tell your younger self with hindsight 2020? Mm -hmm. um, would you kind of make suggestions of how to do th certain things differently or would you feel like the, the choices that were made, the path that was taken, that that was perfect. You shouldn't have changed it or done anything differently. What would you say to yourself? Yeah, I mean, I would I would say to myself, um, you know, say save your money a little more. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe, maybe not. Don't buy that. Uh, that jacket <laughs> or maybe, maybe don't buy five pair of Jordans. Maybe, you know, just, just, just buy two. Uh, but yeah, that would be the, 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 probably one of the main things. Definitely pr proud of my journey. Um, you know, wouldn't change much, but, uh, that, and then just even a lesson to other, you know, kids coming up, especially being an entrepreneur, um, just, just like your time, your time is very, very valuable <laughs> and you have to be so, um, uh, strategic and careful with how you allocate your time. You also have to be very careful with how you um, use your money and spend your money uh, mm -hmm. versus what you invest in versus what you just you know splurge on or whatever. It's very important because mm -hmm. you know, eventually you want to, you want to hire people and you know do different things. And um, you know the money only goes so far. You can't at least legally go and just print money. So you got to really treasure it. So yeah, really uh, understanding the value of, of money. Yes, and you know you you are my mentor, and there's a there's a lesson that you taught me also is that you 
you have to be smart about who you surround yourself with, mm -hmm. who you partner with yes. on the journey, right? Yes, I, I absolutely. That's a huge one. Thank you for <laughs> crediting me with that. But yeah, that's so important. Um, really understanding, you know, who you're um, surrounding yourself with, who you're hiring. Um, it, it's so important. You have to make sure that you surround yourself with people that have the right intentions, um, mm -hmm. that have the right heart. Uh, though, though, those are even more important than skills <laughs> at some point, you know, you can kind of overcome some skills, but um, you definitely have to make sure you have the right people, um, you know, with you because they, they ultimately, they ultimately are going to determine if you're successful or not. So mm -hmm. if you have the wrong people, you won't be successful. Absolutely. So what are your hopes for Diego? Wow. Uh, I want Diego, my son, to just you know, have the, um, have a great, great life, do what, what, what he loves to do. Um, I really tried to introduce him to so many different things just so he can really have that exposure and know okay. what, 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 what he likes, what, what, what he doesn't like. Um, and that's happening. I mean, he's doing great right now. He's making great grades. Um, he is, his concept of money is really good. You know, he, he um he saves you know he's only wow. uh, he's about to be eleven uh in 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 a few days um and yeah and, and what what I love also is that he's not pressed like if he gets some money he doesn't feel like he has to just go and spend it you know he's fine with with uh you know just letting it letting it sit which was not how I was uh <laughs> coming coming up at all but um. Yeah, but yeah, my hopes for him is to really be able to find what he loves to do. Um, I can see little glimpses in that with different things, but um, you know, I also want him to just have the patience to let things let let things happen. Not feel that he has to rush into in, into anything versus a profession or anything. And he he definitely has that. So I think he is clearly becoming the best version of my wife and I uh, together. So yeah, I'm very, very proud and just want him to be able to uh, be anything he truly, truly wants to be. Wow, that's fantastic. Well, he's lucky to have you as his dad, for sure. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Lucky to have him as a son. So let's move to the next section, words of wisdom. Not to say that we haven't shared any yet. Um, <laughs> let's, talk, let's talk to the, the young people who aspire to become entrepreneurs, who want to be self-starters. They want to own their business. They want to be in charge of their lives. What are some steps that they can take, skills they can build, habits they can have? Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, yeah. As uh, we said, you know, valuing time and money are the two, two very important, two very important skills. Um, and, you know, entrepreneurship is not for everybody. So the first thing that I would encourage, encourage them to do is to really try to find out if entrepreneurship is for them. Mm -hmm. um, I've crossed paths with many people that thought entrepreneurship was their path. And they've learned that it, it is really not, you know, they ended up going back to school to get another degree, which is great, or, you know, doing something else. So I think the most important thing is to really understand if it's for you, because yeah, it sounds cool, have your own business, oh, have my own hours, but you really don't, you still have to put that time in. So it may not be in a traditional nine to five. Yeah, more stuff one in the morning. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, life of entrepreneur of an entrepreneur is not easy. Um, and yeah, I would really encourage you to, you know, try to find out if that's really, really what you want to do. And then if it is, then okay, let's you you, you got to go for it. You got to go for it all the way and exhaust everything that you have to make it happen. And right. you can do it if you just believe it and keep pushing and just don't stop. A lot yeah. of people make it, a lot of people purely make it because they just don't stop. It's as simple as that. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
logistically, you know, I've gone through these motions not so long ago, um, and there, there's a lot involved. You need to set up your business. You need mm -hmm. to, you know, register with the state you have to get a lawyer and all that jazz. So um, is there any tool set, any resources that were useful for you? Yeah, um, yeah, it's, it's interesting. I, I'm trying to think of some of those are. So I would go to the uh, Secretary of State's website it is mm -hmm. a great resource. Uh, so I think it's SONC.org, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, we'll, we'll post that up here in the resources area. But um, yes, ch check out the resources section of this podcast and we'll have a whole section on the website that will show you how to register your business, how to get your tax ID. Uh, yeah. There are a series of steps that you have to take first. You need to get your articles um, and you can do that on the Secretary of State's website. Um, then you can get your tax ID. I think that's on irs.gov. Um, from there, you can get your bank account, but you have to have your articles and you have to have your tax ID before you can get the bank account. So those are really the three main things. Um, most small businesses, you probably want to choose just to be an LLC. Yeah. And uh, from there, you know, it, it, it helps to have, you know, pick out who your you know accountant's going to be, who can handle um, your taxes and, and all of your finances. Um, and then at least have access to an attorney if you need it. You need to find out what insurance you need to have a, as a business. Yeah. Um, certain certain contracts that you get, and we've run into this before, require like insurance. So, mm -hmm. and it's much better if you already have that versus trying to scramble at the end and um, and and get that. So those are all very important things, and yeah, we'll have all that available in the resources section. Yeah. So you talked about lear learning about your brand development in, in, in your early uh, professional years. Um, but let's talk about personal brand and this day and age, your, your digital persona. Mm -hmm all living in this virtual world now and we're setting up these different accounts and different personalities based yeah. on what account it is or based on who else is on on that platform um can you as a as a, a teenager already build a personal brand and how important is it to to be mindful of your digital persona on the internet yeah yeah it's very important to be mindful of that uh, i see a lot of stuff good and bad on the internet that uh, our kids are posting and yeah you can as a, really any age start that digital uh footprint and you want to make sure it's a good one um you know everything that you post out there should be something positive um you know, it, it really it will affect your college applications and even employment if you have a bad digital footprint. And you can start that early. I know one um, social media platform that they're encouraging kids to start using as early as middle school is LinkedIn. And you can use LinkedIn to post about your school projects, the clubs that you're in, you know, various organizations. That's a great way to start that digital footprint. And again, the schools are absolutely looking at that. So just make sure you're posting that. As far as your brand, um, you know, you don't want to really post a lot of, you wanna, you wanna be careful about like me, 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 you know, post a lot of that. Um, you know, if you have um, been a part of a organization that had an event, you know, your, your post after that should really be more of a thank you to that event and those that participated to help make it happen versus, you know, the selfie of yourself and, hey, look at me, look what I'm doing, you know, uh, type of uh, thing that that's kind of more the um, accepted practice when it comes to building that digital footprint. And uh, there's a lot of great resources and books that we um, also put in the, the resources section on on how to build that successfully. Yes. Um and, you know, in recent days, months, years, it feels forever, but 
um, you know, everybody uses social media to some mm -hmm. degree, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Parler. I don't, I don't use Parler, but anyhow. Um, and in, in recent days, some of um, individuals had to be taken offline and their accounts were shut down. Um, and it kind of conflicted with the whole concept of free speech. Mm -hmm. um, but free speech, you know, the Bill of Rights didn't come with a free Twitter account or access to technology such as Facebook, YouTube, and, and so forth. So what's your take on these two concepts and, and how do you marry them? Yeah, yeah, it's an interesting, uh, great question. Um, and yeah, like you said, you know, free speech didn't come with a tw Twitter account. Um, you know, there's free speech, but free speech doesn't give you um, the right to um, inflict harm on on people. That that that's not a that's not a, a right to 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 do that. So. Um, you know, and again, these are private. These are pri private companies. You know, Twitter is private company. Mm -hmm. you know, Facebook is a private companies, and um, you know, we have to definitely strike a a, a balance. But you know, I, again, I personally feel that um, you know, in, in anything that's posted, there's just not a reason for all the negative net net negative posts. Mm -hmm. I really. Um, don't see a need for that. I don't read that. I know that gets clicks and gets a lot of attention, but um, that's just something that I don't like to see or really agree with or believe in. But um, I, I feel that it's within you know the social media platforms' rights to ban people that are doing things to incite violence and riots, and that that that's only going to destroy destroy um, humanity. So. Um, we, we don't have a right to destroy humanity, right? <laughs> so, you know, if, 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 if that's your agenda, you need to be banned. Um, I commend them for finally stepping up. I think things should have started earlier. Um, yes. But uh, I think we're finally heading in the right direction. And a lot is to be said about the business model, right? So let's talk a little bit about what is their business model? Because the technology beneath the Facebook page is not yeah. free so no. how are they making money so what is the business model yeah 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 the business model I mean that information is shared and, and through through ads and sponsorships and 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 all of that so you know the fact that yeah you can go and create a free twitter account linkedin facebook um that paid for some way right <laughs> and people are paying for that data that information to really sell as and to, to sell you things it's all about selling products and, and making money at the end of the day so it's a business um mm -hmm. you know heck even our email you know that we all a lot of us use for free you know that data is being used so that the okay we know what your buying habits are what your likes are so then companies can advertise to you to buy more of that Mm -hmm. You know, it's not, you know, if, 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 if you want to do whatever you want to do and um, not have to, uh, you know, um, have any consequences or share that data, then you have to go and buy, buy your own server and host your own email, right? <laughs> you know, um, but yeah, all these free platforms, they're, they're, they're not free. Yeah, absolutely. And um, let's talk a little bit about the concept of a botnet because botnets mm -hmm. became a thing on social media. So what are they? Ooh, a botnet, that's... Um, so my understanding of a botnet is the... Um, it's, it's kind of what we were talking about before where um, the companies are able to understand your your buying habits and what you um what you gravitate towards on the internet and that's why when you then go to if you visit a particular site um where you're searching um, purchasing something and then you're online the next day and you're on a website that has ads you may see an ad for that site if you bought some shoes from nike and then you're on the site the next day and you see uh, a Nike ad, or you see the shoes that you just bought, <laughs> right? That's because all these things are tracked and, and traced. Mm -hmm. uh, so 
uh, again, another just another part of the whole e-commerce engine that is backing all of all of this. Yeah. And also social media has been used not just to sell a product, mm -hmm. but to sell ideas and yes. to, to perhaps move people to take certain actions based on non-factual ideas. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, and so these misinformation campaigns were really used to um we're using social media to propagate, mm -hmm. you know, on a long-term basis, on a constant basis, these ideas that people start to believe because they kept popping up and right. people were sharing them. And, um, but also you, you can own 20 or a thousand different pages on social media put some name on it or a, a business face and use that to propagate that idea, information, whatever it may be. And some people just take it for face value. And that's the danger of these platforms is where, where's the truth? Where's that single version of the truth? Who is doing the checks and balances? Yeah. Where social media has none to my knowledge. Mm -hmm. No, no, yeah, there's there's none there in that. I don't know where that's gonna go, how we get those checks and balances, you know, it, it's, that that definitely is a big problem. And we, you know, as we see things spiral out, spiraling out of control, um, yeah. you know, things just shut down an account, but yeah, with the misinformation and, you know, these being used as the truth mm -hmm. and I think it's the truth, how do you overcome that? How do you um, manage that is a real, real issue that we've got yeah. to, to, to deal with. Yeah. Yeah. So words of wisdom, use social media wisely right. and responsibly. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay, so let's talk about the definition of success. What is your definition of success? Mm. Um, you know, my definition of success is just being being fulfilled. Um, you know, it's not about um, money or um, it's not about a lot of the superficial things, but really just being being happy, being being able to be a happy person and have as much time as possible to do the things that you want to do. I think that that success, I, I, I really do. And to you, what you want to do is invest in your community. Yes. Yep. Invest in my community. I want to make, um, yeah, I, I want people to get the most out of themselves. Uh, mm -hmm. And I feel that through exposure that that does, does that. I want everyone to be able to be the, their, their best self, um, whether if they, are suffering from a disability, from maybe not having access to certain things. I want them to be able to to be their their best self. So yeah, as far as my definition of success and being happy and then having the time to do the things that you want to do, you know, my time to do things I want to do would be able to do more um tweens and technology, bowling for autism would be yeah. yeah. So what are you grateful for? I'm grateful for having the opportunity still to um, really just use what I've been blessed with. Um, just having another day is what I'm grateful for. Um, I mean, I look at all the things that are really kind of taking taking us out right now. Um, I'm thankful just to still still have a chance. You know, every day is a new opportunity to uh, do more. So you know, every, you know, been blessed with having a day, hopefully, you know, I'll have tomorrow. And uh, yeah, I'm honestly just thankful for still having a, ha have, having a chance to, uh, to make an impact. Wow, very powerful. Well, I personally want to thank you for being my inspiration, my mentor. You know, since we crossed paths, there's been this new dimension to to my existence truly and you've enabled me you've helped me 
to really realize my dream and trying to make a difference in the lives of other people and in partnership with you i feel that we're, we're doing amazing things and we're going to be doing amazing things so i uh, and and on top of that, you've introduced me to other people who are great. So I, you know, it, it's it's so important to understand why you're crossing paths with people, and yeah. invest in the right relationships. Um, and so I've 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 been blessed to know you, Derek, for uh, truly. And um, you know, I. Uh, I think it's important to find these positive trailblazers, the the connectors, the mentors, the 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 visionary leaders in in your community to really yeah. surround yourself with them. Yeah. Just get close, start talking to them because they're the people who will bring that light to you that that will give you a vision for yourself who may see the potential that you have but you don't see it yourself so that is um you know the the reason why i am personally very grateful to to know you to call my friend my partner as well as um you know the, the trailblazer that you are in our community so we're really blessed Thank, thank you. No, thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, I'm honored to to be a part um, of this journey. Uh, thankful to be a mentor to you. I look at you being a mentor to me. So we're 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 doing it together. Um, I'm so proud of what we've done with Twins and Tech. I know we're going to do so much more. Um, so yeah, happy to call you a friend and happy to be on this show. So uh, I love what you're doing here. This is great. Um, you know, I wish I could have seen something like this coming up. So I know this will be uh, just a great platform for people to identify with someone like themselves and see how they did it and um, know that anything is possible because it is. So thank you. Oh, so well said. Thank you so much. And on a final note, just a final uh, little quote. It is Martin Luther King Jr. Day after all. And uh, one thing that always speaks to me um, I, I, I look at it every day and it's uh, the quote that says, life's most urgent and persistent question is, what are you doing for others? Yeah, yeah, very well said. Yeah, that's so important. You gotta keep doing for others. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Derek. Right. Thank you. On the real, we appear to get gone. Victory is ours. Bring the chip home. Galactic, and I'm looking to get more. Raise it up, see what you don't know. Running like the blood, bumping from the pressure of a joint in the rush. We crush whatever we touch. Where you been, y'all? Everyone know. You know what I'm saying? Huh. And if you still don't get it, let it chill for a minute. Time is money, you trust me, man. I'm all business. And if you want something done, do your shit to get it finished. Wake up, victory's mine. On top, still on the grind. Gotta go get it right now. Holla at me, with me. It's time. Take over God, we gon' make it Show the world that it's shining our greatness Keep it real, never gon' fake this Till we make it, till we make it Taking off, flying high like a spaceship Take control, take a shot, what you waiting for? Keep it real, never gon' fake this Till we make it, till we make it Second verse, I'm telling you I'm ready to go Letting you know, cause I'm never alone The ones that I roll with are incredibly known For getting down to the nitty gritty If you really with me, let's go Moves made, dues paid Most talk, but don't do a thing We certified, observe as I Come through and give a true display We champions, understand me Standing under a victory canopy Canopy, the enemy was handed keys Ready to drive at top speed, let's get it out Wake up, victory's mine On top, still on the grind Gotta go get it right now Holla at me if you're with me It's time Make it, show the world that it's shining our greatness. Keep it real, never gon' fake this. So we make it, so we make it. Taking off, flying high like a spaceship. Take control, take a shot, what you waiting for? Keep it real, never gon' fake this. So we make it, so we make it. Show the world that it's
shining our greatness Keep it real, never gon' fake this Till we make it, till we make it Taking off, flying high like a spaceship Take control, take a shot, what you waiting for? Keep it real, never gon' fake this Till we make it, till we make it Little take all we got, we gon' make it Keep it real, never gon' fake this Taking off, flying high like a spaceship Take control, take a shot, what you waiting for? Keep it real, never gon' fake this Till we make it, till we make it